I don't know if it was because it was a boy or we were 10, but I just didn't feel a thing. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Mar. Katie and I are still apart, but we have five days left until we see each other again. I'm so excited, you have no idea. Technically it's like five days, two hours and 54 minutes or something until my plane takes off. I'm not counting or anything. The last video that I will record by myself without her here will be my coming out story. Some of this stuff is deeply personal. Actually, all of this stuff is deeply personal, but some of it is stuff that other people know. Some of it is stuff that I really haven't mentioned anyone. People that are in my life have very different takes on it. A lot of it comes from conservative family members. People can really only accept what they decide they understand. My story starts <laughs> in elementary school. I was eight when I first realized it, when I had a crush on a girl in third grade. That was when I had the first inkling that my romantic inclinations were not the norm. Um, and of course in elementary school, they aren't full-blown attractions. At that point, I wanted to hang out with the boys as friends. And people say, well, how could you have known in elementary school? Well, people are always asking like, oh, like, do you have a boyfriend yet? Or is there a boy that you have a crush on in school? And I would always be like, no. I had two really good guy friends who lived across the street from me just were howls and I never felt any sort of inclinations. The funny thing was though, in fifth grade, I did have my first kiss with one of, with the boy from across the street. And no offense to if he's watching this, he knows who he is. So, and I'm not gonna say who it is. I don't know if it was because it was a boy or we were 10, probably a mix of both, but I just didn't feel a thing. I was like, this is so weird. And it probably was because we were so young, but we were just like seeing what it was. And it was kind of like on a dare. I just from that moment on, I think was like a turning point for me where I was like, this is a little off. Continuing on from there, I looked at girls and the older I got, the more I wanted to be with them romantically. I didn't want to be with boys romantically. It was everything that anyone could ever talk about in for what love feels like. You look at them and when they're smiling, it makes you feel butterflies in your chest or you want to be near them all the time. It was really confusing for me because I mean, it started when I lived in Maryland and I also grew up in a Catholic family and the older I got, it really scared me. I just didn't know exactly what to feel. I didn't know what my family would feel and all I knew at that time, based on the information that I gathered from other people's reactions, even things, my parents are two of the most loving people and they support me endlessly. But growing up, there were little like side comments and this was before they knew about the LGBTQ community that they probably don't even remember because they were, they were so small, but things that hinted that maybe they wouldn't be the most accepting, probably just because they didn't, they weren't, as exposed to it. It didn't relate so much to the faith, just so much as they didn't know that much about it. Going through middle school always seemed to have like a very tangible crush on a girl, but I never had a relationship. All through middle school, never tried anything, mostly because I was scared. Nobody, especially moving to Iowa in seventh grade in that conservative environment. Thinking about my middle school experience in Iowa, if I looked at everyone with the lens that I have now, seeing my own behaviors and being able to detect that in other people and knowing that that could indicate maybe I would have been able to, but I knew pretty strictly that the people that I had crushes on were straight. That was always something that I tended to have struggles with. She's just gonna do her own thing in the background. It's one thing to have a crush on someone who it is possible that they could also like you back because in a heterosexual relationship, if a guy likes a girl or a girl likes a guy, like it is still possible that they could end up together. But in that situation, basically I was liking people who were hardwired to never be able to like me back. So I never really had a dating life in high school. I did have a pretty significant crush on a boy my freshman year. So I was like, wait a minute. And that made me kind of confused because I really didn't have a crush on a boy up until that point. And before that, if anyone had ever asked me if I had a crush on a, well, no, okay, rewind. I guess I did have feelings for one other boy 
starting in middle school, now that I remember. But the thing is, for every one boy, seven or eight girls that I had thought were gorgeous and I had such a huge crush on. My junior year of high school, I was in a group that went to Australia, so that was super fun. It was kind of a cultural trip. Even saying that I became close with this guy uh, who's from New York, it was mainly, I think maybe I liked the attention. I feel really bad because I do think I led him on in a way, but I think also I was still trying to figure myself out and what I wanted. So we got closer and he was being just kind of a, a boy and always trying to like mess with me to get my attention. But at one point near the end of the trip, it was a five week trip and at one point we were alone and we kissed. And then all I could think of was a flashback to being 10 years old, kissing another boy, and I still felt nothing. Some people might say, well, I mean, you just don't have the connection with that person. But the fact was, I hardly had any connection with boys at all. Like, this was not new. If any boy, even if they were super attractive and super sweet, he wasn't like the worst to look at either. And he was goofy and fun and probably not really my type if I did have a type in a guy. Even if the most attractive man in the world came on to me in that way, it would be nothing like if it was a girl I was attracted to. I just, uh, just thinking about it, it was, there's no comparison. And I knew in my heart of hearts the difference between the two. I never questioned that I was on the queer spectrum. It was trying to figure out how to cope with that without saying anything. I just wasn't old enough to really establish the, I'm gonna say label, but that's, I don't want, I didn't want to put myself in a box, but just identifying what it was, something that was different from what everyone was expecting of me. It didn't change going to a more conservative environment. And I have family members who say that Milliken indoctrinated me, that being at a liberal arts college caused this for me. And all I can say to that is I knew 10 years prior to me going to that university. And that's the only thing that makes me a little bit mad because people will see individuals coming out or identifying as something completely different than what they did in middle school and high school, it's because they feel safe, finally. Maybe they finally feel like they are able to be themselves because they read into the context or maybe the direct statements of people who say, we don't accept that, and anyone who decides to be that, they won't be accepted where they are. And so they hide, and that's what I did. In uh, political conversations, they made themselves very clear on where they stood. I knew that wasn't the best time for me to say something. My family would support me, at least now I know that, uh, because of where they stand now, but it wasn't good for me to do it at that time. So at Milliken, I started my freshman year, everything was wonderful, and I was seeing more and more people. And <laughs> one of the misconceptions that I made, and looking back now, it was silly. I was like, I can't come out because I'm gonna be a theater major and the only homosexuals in theater are men, <laughs> which is such a huge misconception. I feel silly for it now, but then seeing people who were women on the LGBTQ plus spectrum in my major just opened my eyes and I, it made me realize like, yeah, that is kind of silly. Like anybody in any profession can be who they are and love who they want. Just one of the many reasons why I felt safe in the Millican environment. So the pinnacle moment, I was in my room in my residence hall. It was the silliest thing. I was literally folding my underwear. I was overcome with this feeling of, I can't hold it in anymore. This had become a secret that I had held in for 10 years at that point. I hadn't told another living soul and it was eating away at me. And I think between holding it in for so long and finally feeling like I could say something, it kind of bubbled over. The first person I told was my best friend, Megan from back home in Iowa. And I texted her. I said, hey, <laughs> I need to tell you something. I don't remember it word for word because all I remember was shaking and being terrified out of my mind. I knew she would be fine because that's just the kind of person that she is. She's absolutely wonderful, but I, I had no precedence. Like I had known other people who had been, who had come out and been safe, but I didn't know their process. I didn't know who they told. I didn't know how long it was for them to be safe and to feel okay. And she said, yeah, tell me anything. Like I'm here for you. Do you want to call? And I said, no, because I didn't know like if my voice would hold up or if I would just start 
breaking down crying. I didn't know what I would do. I told her and like, I don't even, again, I don't remember exactly what I said, but it did end with I'm bisexual. And I said that because I had been taking like the feelings that I did have for like one or two boys plus all the feelings that I had for women. And so the only thing I could conclude at that point was that I was bisexual. That was the best label I could give it. She said, I support you so much. She also told me about another friend of ours who had also come out to their friends and their friend group was okay with it. She asked me if it was okay if she told that other friend of ours about my realization that I had had 10 years ago. <laughs> Both of them were super supportive. Those were the first two people that I told. I knew that it had to happen that way just for my own comfort level. I knew eventually that I had to tell my parents. The biggest thing with telling my parents, just because I was so scared and I didn't know and how our faith would play into things. Also, I wanna mention just how important my Christian faith is to me. The unfortunate thing is those two worlds are very at odds. And I kind of feel that dichotomy within myself. It hurts to see that faith that I align myself with does not always follow what he teaches. He was always with the people who were the outcasts. He was the one who discounted the ones who wanted to cast people aside. I try to always lead with love just as I know that he would, but when you see people in your church who probably would never talk to you again if you told them, that stings. So I told two of my friends, so now word was out. This wasn't something that I was keeping to myself anymore. It was time. So I went home for winter break. I believe it was the 21st, so December 21st of 2014. We, <laughs> I was trying to think of a good time to tell my parents. I specifically remember the movie we were watching. It was If I Stay with Chloe Grace Moretz in it, but the movie ended, my brothers were downstairs and it was just my parents in the living room and we were just talking. I think maybe it was divine intervention or something like that. Those moments are very rare when both of my parents are in the same room with just me and both of my brothers were far away enough that I could have this conversation with them another time. The Christmas tree was there and it was just kind of very peaceful and quiet. And uh, it's, it's making my heart pound kind of a little bit too, just remembering the anxiety that I felt, but knowing that I could not pass up this opportunity. It was too perfect. So I said, hey, um, to both of them, there's something I need to tell you. And of course my mom thinks, she's like, oh, you're pregnant. I'm like, no. Actually, what I'm about to say would make that very improbable. So I said, there's something that I've been wanting to tell you guys for a while, like a very long time. And they just kind of got real close and they were paying close attention and said, so I'm bisexual. Both of them were kind of like, all right. My dad does have a brother who is gay. Um, and so LGBTQ plus within the family like the extended family was not new, but within the immediate family, it definitely was, especially someone that was bisexual because they'd never really encountered anybody like that before. Their initial thought about it was that it was a transition phase. Definitely is not. I guess technically I do still consider myself on the bisexual range or really I just kind of consider myself queer. At that time, I couldn't really put words to it. I knew that I, liked girls a lot more than I liked boys, but there were some boys that I did find very attractive and I had this romantic connection with, but it was so few compared to the women that I had had feelings for. I specifically remember my mom saying, are you sure? And I said, yes. And then I said, I've known since third grade. She was like, I don't think you could have known at that point. And I was like, I don't think you can say what I did or didn't feel. And it was a very emotional night. There were lots of tears on my end. I was trying to figure it out and trying to verbally explain something that I'd just been feeling and had never put words to, which was hard. But at the end of the night, they told me that they always will love me. It doesn't matter who I decide to be with at the end of the day, that I will always have their support. And I, can, I don't ever have to question their love for me, which was a big relief. Flash forward to sophomore year at Milliken. Up until this point, I was 19 and I still had not dated anybody, like at all. Um, hadn't even really had any other like casual experiences either because my high school environment didn't really provide any opportunities in that way, or at least not opportunities that I wanted. Um, 
And before that, I just wasn't really old enough to really identify that or be old enough to really be okay with trying that. Then sophomore year, an opportunity arose with another girl who was in my grade. I opened myself up to that opportunity and it was good to start. And she said that she could see us together. Ended up ghosting me at that point. I'm happy that that situation happened. It would help me grow and teach me who I was and that Yes, I genuinely was interested in women. It showed me that I was capable of a lot of love. And I feel that I was naive in a lot of ways. I mean, hell, I'd, I'd never, ever, ever experienced something like that with someone, especially not someone that finally I had that kind of romantic feeling for. But the situation with the girl my sophomore year of college stung and it took me a really long time to get over and a lot longer than I'm proud to say that it took. I would say that I was not officially over that situation until my senior year. The one thing that I am thankful that it took me that long to really kind of get over that and to be able to move on to look at other people was that it put me in the perfect timeline to be with Katie. It crept up on me. I'd had little crushes on people every once in a while, but this was different. This was the first time that I had actually like started a really good friendship with someone before starting to have feelings for them. We were hanging out more and if you have any more like questions about how she and I started dating, then we have another video for that. The only people that really knew at that point that I was on the queer spectrum were my parents, those two friends back from high school. And then of course like, I'd been more open with people at college and especially after that dating experience that I had my sophomore year, people became more aware that I was interested in women and that I hadn't dated really at all after that. Um, I guess it kind of, the sophomore year situation kind of set me off and so I just kind of like pulled myself out of the dating pool just to breathe. I think that that timing with Katie then came the time of making that decision of, do I say something? If in my wildest dreams, we somehow worked out, <laughs> this would no longer be something that is a secret. There would be a personification of my sexuality, something that a lot of people would disagree with. But knowing that with her, I didn't care. Just feeling so free. Three years at Millican after I was able to come out, I felt more like myself than I had ever been. I felt lighter. I had gotten so good at pretending like I was straight that I don't think I ever let anything slip just because I was so careful and so meticulous. Now, of course, when I was growing up, wearing basketball shorts and a hat backwards all the time, that might have led on to something that I maybe wasn't the straightest person that they've met ever. I do have so many people in my life who love us and support us and are happy that we're together and are happy to see me happy. I absolutely adore Katie's family. They are also super supportive. And in the end, that's all that truly matters. I hope that you liked this video. It was a little bit more serious than the ones that we've done in the past. Just a little bit more about me and my journey with who I am. And if this brings comfort or any kind of light bulb to anybody, please feel free to message us on our Instagram. Katie and I would keep those in full confidence. Just let us know and we would be happy to listen. Thanks so much. Remember to like and subscribe, but you know what to do. Bye.